the first section of Celestial Realms uh, has description of the realms. You have a breakdown of each realm. So there's Tengoku, which is heaven. Yomi, the realm of the honored ancestor. Chikushodo, which is the realm of animal spirits. Meido, which is the realm of the dead, or the, wait, the waiting realm, technically speaking. Uh, Gakido, which is the realm of hungry spirits, and so on. I really liked that section a lot. It does have geography later on with various places in these realms. It does have some wonderful locations. So if you happen to be cruising around Tengoku, you can go to you know sightseeing. And has some descriptions of various important denizens, Amaterasu and MOO, and it has adventure seeds for each realm. So I, I liked that. I liked that they described who the Kitsu were as guardians of Tengoku, who sometimes come to Earth and can possess their descendants to the point where their descendants look like a cat person <laughs> when they are possessed, thus explaining why sometimes you see certain LCG cards show up with cat people on them, even though there are no cat people. And then there's a section on religious cults. So it has the nature, beliefs, practice, who is recruited, how the emperor's view, an NPC, adventure seeds, both for a cult of Lord Moon and for blood speakers. They do have an interesting tidbit in there where people who have birthmarks or other odd things are considered moon people. And they come to the earth from the moon in their moon kabune. And yes, you can play a Sailor Moon campaign. The other thing that these source books tend to have is a minor clan. And as we've known for a while, it's going to be the centipede because they're a very magical clan. Their abilities are super strong for an anti Shadowlands game. But that also is a game where they would shine. No pun intended. I like the fire that heals, uh, this alternate healing school. I like in general that uh, New 5R is bringing more healing type schools into the game. Yeah, my understanding is it's a lot of, uh, my fire will burn the bad people, but heal the good people, which I think that just sounds really cool. <laughs> uh, Shiken Initiates, practically speaking, this is a Phoenix school, though technically you could do it in another school. The school lets you change your dice results, which is very powerful. This is the school you want if you have terrible dice luck, because you can change what the dice say. Yeah, if you just keep rolling blanks all the time, then here you go. This is what this is for you. Uh, I like the idea of the Kaito Spirit Seeker, because the body here becomes effectively a living shrine, which I think is very interesting. And it is uh, an aspect of some Japanese religion as well, where, you know, the whole point of being a medium is you get possessed. Let's see. For Kayu Architects, these are fun in style, building buildings, modifying the terrain, but it would take a really creative player to make use of it, or a GM who is setting a campaign around a home base, which yeah. some campaigns work for. Absolutely. Uh, it's just not common in games that I've seen, but you totally can. Your Kitsu Realm Wanderer, and that sounds pretty awesome. So Shikenja Bushi, but with some privileged invocations, so invocations that come with the curriculum. And there uh, seems to be someone would be you know, buffing the party when they're invoking other spirit realms and also doing stuff with terrains. So that sounds like a, an interesting combo. Void magic, which is a big thing in the old 5R, and people are going to really be interested in how this all works. The law stuff is very interesting. The way void is described, I think, is just that little tiny bit different from the way void is described. It feels way closer to the nothing than it used to. Maybe that's just my reading of it, but it just felt a little bit more like the nothing. But still, nothing and everything. So that was interesting. The the big change that I was not expecting is that being able to use inversions does not necessarily come with learning how to use invocations. So you can be an Ishiken, but not a Shugenja, in theory. Inversions, I found, were very mixed bag. So at first level, you know, rank one inversions, you have both the 
ability to do interparty communication telepathically, which is cool, but not huge, to let's do a whole Galaxy Quest Omega-13 style event where you can go back and reverse time for 13 seconds, including undoing that lethal blow or anything. Both of those are rank one. At rank five, they range from just literally just doing your theology and damage to somebody, which is very small, to literally resurrecting someone from the dead permanently. There is a section after that, which is building adventures. So talking about, okay, so there are cultist groups out there. Here's how you might want to make your own. How do you think that went? What did you feel about that? Yeah, so I thought it was interesting. A lot of people are looking forward to this. It was okay. It's mostly fluff. However, it does make good cult. <laughs> so this one really struck me. It is good for making a decent religious group. As done. Like a, a, a religious group that has been around for hundreds of years if you want a new religion. That's, that's how the section is formulated as if you had a new religion, because it has what role is this fulfilling in society and what are their symbols and what are their locations, that sort of thing. 